Hello everyone. Now having completed a playthrough of Marvel's Midnight Suns, I'm going to provide a review as promised and really going to look at five aspects which is the story, progression, gameplay, visuals and replayability. Now if you're interested in watching the playthrough, I've included the link in the description below and if you find this review useful, please do hit the like button and subscribe. Without further ado, let's get started. So the first aspect I'll cover off is the story. Now as a superhero game, I think it's quite important for them to get the story right. And it started off pretty slow, but it got me hooked and emotionally attached after playing through a little bit of it. Not just a little bit, I guess quite a bit of it. And I really started really enjoying myself after saving Wanda. I guess that's that big achievement where once we save one of the superheroes from the villain, in this case Wanda or the Scarlet Witch, I really started getting attached to the story and seeing what was going to happen and also what was the end, um, what was the ending so to speak and how I as this one of the heroes I guess played a role in that ending. Now the story, the good thing about the story is it doesn't require you to have much prior knowledge of the heroes for you to enjoy it. You might have some favorites, for example I was always a fan of Spider-Man, uh, always a fan of Iron Man, but I didn't know too much of the others aside from I guess the Marvel uh, movies that I watched as well, but it didn't deter me from actually enjoying it. This doesn't actually touch on their skills or anything like that, it's just purely from a story content perspective. So as, from a story, I give it an 8 out of 10. The reason it's an 8 and a 10 is, personally, it started off a bit slow for me, and I'm also, also put off by the constant superheroes always letting off enemies for various reasons early in the story. But towards the end, this kind of eased off, which was really, really good. And finally, I guess from the story perspective, the dialogue was really well written. Um, a lot of the voice actors were also really good. I really enjoyed Scarlet Witch's voice actor as well, uh, along with, for example, Iron Man and also Doctor Strange. The next component I'll talk about is progression. Now, when I talk about progression, it's really from the perspective of your character or support characters evolving as you progress further in the game. Whether it's the story quest, side quest, whether it's getting new skills, getting new levels, getting new abilities, and so on and so forth. So that's, that's the point of view I'm going to take. Now, why am I taking that point of view? It's because this is a role-playing game, RPG game. So for me, the whole point of a role-playing game is that you have a sense of progression. It's not just that you're always the same, there is no, um, you don't actually enjoy any improvements or upgrades. And most games do have that anyway, so that you have a sense of achievement and fulfillment as well. So in terms of Marvel's Midnight Suns, I found that the leveling of characters was not as straightforward, um, and that wasn't as obvious. So what I found is you level up your characters more based on the cards, their cards that you play in battle. So what I mean is a hero only gets experience if you play their cards in in battles. If you don't play as much of their cards, they don't level up as much as another hero that you constantly play their cards in battle. However, I did like how they introduced the daily sparring option and threat room as a way to counter the fact that you may not play a superhero as much during battle or even bring them into battle. Because these two options allows you to effectively level up your heroes outside the battles to keep up with the highest leveled hero in case they're lagging behind. Now, for me, I had favorite superheroes, not just because I like them, but because I prefer their gameplay style in terms of their cards and their abilities. So I don't play the others as much. But because I have the option of daily sparring and threat room, I'm able to then also bring the other lower leveled heroes up to speed with the highest level hero in case I do want to try them out or in case I need them in a story mission. There's also a sense of progression when it comes to research. I quite like that, where you have to level it up and then meet specific requirements in order to research additional subject matters that will grant you additional game options, so to speak, whether it's in the form of new items or new skill cards and so on and so forth. So in terms of progression, I give this a 7. 
Okay, the next big component is the gameplay. Um, so, in the beginning, I was really excited to see how each card or skill worked along with the animation. It was really awesome. I'm a super big fan of superheroes, uh, the comics, even in, in Japanese comics or Korean comics, anything really that can draw my attention in terms of, you know, having the superhero storyline. So I really enjoyed seeing their skills come to life, I guess, in a game. However, after having seen some of the skills, same skills a number of times, it does tend to get tired. Um, I did wish that the game had the option to turn off the skill animation after, let's say, your 20th battle, because you know it's gonna, what it's going to do, uh, what it's going to look like, and you may not actually want to see it again and again and again. But I didn't actually see an option to turn it off. From a tactical perspective, I think it was very good and varied, with a lot of different card skills, so from support skills to tanking skills, so to speak, to even attack skills, purely attack skills. I do think, however, that the heroes could be more balanced in their roles. So, for example, I felt Wolverine was rather weak. Now, the way Hugh Jackman, you know, um, kind of presented how Wolverine could be in, in these movies, he's, he's not weak at all. I'm not sure if it's intentional how they portrayed Wolverine in this game. But yes, I felt he was rather weak and it could be more balanced in terms of maybe upping one of his skill sets a bit more. Or perhaps I just haven't played through Wolverine as much um, as I would have liked because he wasn't my favorite character uh, in the game. I also felt that the game could also explain that some heroes are designed to take on specific roles. Um, what I mean by this is in, in RPG games, normally you have characters taking on the role of a tanker or supporter or attacker. Um, and for the avid gamers, I don't think this would be a problem, but in order to discern which superhero takes on a better role as a tanker, supporter or attacker. But when it comes to a casual player like myself, I think it would have been nice just to have a bit of a recommendation on what role a superhero could best utilize their skills for, so whether as a tanker, supporter, or attacker. This is because when you increase a hero's attributes, for example through daily sparring, um, you actually can tailor it so that you only focus on specific attributes in line with what role they would best play. So if they're a tanker, then you'd want to focus on attributes that would enhance their role as a tanker. Knowing early on that heroes potentially perform better in in some roles compared to the other um, would have been would have been helpful, I guess, for a casual player. In terms of the side quests, I think they are a great distraction. Um, if I personally didn't suffer from motion sickness, I think I would have enjoyed it more. But because I do, uh, in terms of the fact that it has a narrow field of vision, I do get quite sick quite quickly. Nonetheless, I still played through it. Uh, after I finished the game, I appreciate the puzzles that it had on offer. I also appreciate the fact that I had to use my problem solving skills to solve these puzzles. I Overall though, I didn't feel that the side quest added a whole lot to the game, but some aspects did enhance it. So, so for example, Agatha's Cauldron definitely would have enhanced the gameplay experience. So overall, I give the gameplay aspect of Marvel's Midnight Suns a 7 out of 10 as well. Okay, moving on to the next component which is the visuals now just a very big disclaimer here i'm not going to comment on things like resolution fps etc um, because that can be quite dependent on the setup you have in terms of your laptop or your computer or i mean it's not going to differ much if you're playing on a console but i'm not going to focus on that rather i'm going to focus on the design element of the heroes and the environment itself so i found the visuals rather good i i like the designs of the heroes and i especially love their midnight sun's costume i was quite surprised and ple pleasantly surprised towards the end when they all donned it and it, it looked really cool i don't want to spoil it for you but if you do want to see what it looks like feel free to have a look at my playthrough uh, it's pretty much in the last episode second last two episodes and uh, they would be wearing the new costumes however there's just one one drawback i guess i did not like wolverine's skill animation um i can't remember which skill it was Basically, when he went through that, that skill, when you chose that skill card, it showed him spitting a lot. You could see his spit coming out. <laughs> and while it was funny, um, I think it took away the coolness that Wolverine was meant to represent. Well, I guess, again, from the way Hugh Jamin portray portrayed him, obviously, he was really cool. 
definitely no spit coming out of his mouth whenever he did anything. So yes, that's one thing um, that put me off. But aside from that, I didn't, didn't dislike anything about the environment itself, uh, whether it's around the abbey or the grounds, or even when in battle. There could have been a bit, I guess, more variation in some of the battle fields, but overall, I think it wasn't lacking actually when I say, when I think about it, it was completely fine. So therefore, I'm giving it an 8 out of 10. Okay, moving on to the last component or factor within uh, that I consider when I review a game is replayability. So with any tactical role-playing game, you can always replay it to try out different strategies and tactics, and this is no different for Marvel's Midnight Suns. But as far as the story goes, it stays the same. So some games, for example, would give you a different story based on certain decisions you make throughout the game. But for this gameplay, uh, or this game, it, the story is the same, which isn't necessarily an issue, but it doesn't have that variation, so to speak. However, on the plus side, they do have a post-game version called New Game Plus, which is, essentially an un which is essentially unlocked when you complete your first playthrough. What you can then do is load a new game that allows you to carry over some aspects of your previous playthrough, such as hero levels. So you can, you can complete another playthrough without having to, I guess, start over from scratch. You can carry over all the heroes you've unlocked. For example, Hulk is only unlocked pretty much towards the end of the game. And as such, if you don't play a lot of the uh, side quests a lot, you don't really get to utilize the Hulk and upgrade his skills or get the cards to upgrade his skills as much because it's so near towards the end of the game. But if you start a new game plus, you already have access to him from the beginning and therefore you can actually play around with his character a lot more. So because it doesn't really have a lot of, for me anyway, uh, a lot of replayability because the story is the same and everything is pretty much the same, I'm giving it a five. But in saying that, the reason why I didn't find there was much replayability is because I was already quite satisfied with the story. I didn't feel the need to then go back and try it out. At the same time, I didn't feel drawn to play another playthrough to test out other skills. So maybe a bit biased, but I'll leave it at that. So overall, I am going to give Marvel's Midnight Suns a final score of 7 out of 10. While I struggled at the beginning, I really, really enjoyed it towards the end. So this rating review reflects that. And that's a wrap. Thank you for joining me. Have a great day and take care. Bye.